first of all, let's turn to you, Mr. Sam Rezi of the Cambodian National Rescue Party. You're experiencing all this debate between autocracy and democracy. At, you're at the very edge of it, I would say, at the front lines. How have you experienced it? The current situation in Burma is definitely reminiscent of the collapse of democracy in Cambodia since 2017. Following consecutive electoral successes achieved by the opposition, represented by the CNRP, those election success did shake and threaten seriously the Hun Sen regime. We saw Hun Sen make a constitutional coup. It's different from Burma, where there is a military coup. But the constitutional coup that Hun Sen made in 2017 has the same result as a military coup. The leader of the opposition, Kem Sokha, was arrested that year and the party was dissolved. All the party leaders have been prosecuted, banned from politics anyway, and there is no more real opposition in Cambodia. And we can see that Hun Sen is ahead of the military junta in Myanmar because what Hun Sen has already done, we see that the military junta has just started and is continuing on the same path as Hun Sen. When Aung San Suu Kyi party is dissolved, when there is a sham election with the ruling party taking up all the seats without the participation of the real opposition, the only credible opposition, this kind of result must be expected, then Myanmar will be exactly in the same situation as Cambodia now. Actually, it is no surprise. It should be no surprise because dictatorship means absolute power. And absolute power, by definition, cannot be shared. There should be no illusion that dictators would allow any participation from Democrats in any government. Impossible. Therefore, they have to eliminate the opposition by one way or another, either through a constitutional coup, as Hun Sen made, or a military coup, as the military junta made. But I am still hopeful that the truth will prevail and nobody will be fooled by any facade of democracy. We should start by recognizing the fact that, as I have just said, dictatorship, they need and they will do whatever they can to have absolute power, which cannot be shared. Therefore, all Democrats in the region from Myanmar, also from Thailand, from Cambodia, from Malaysia, from Indonesia, from the Philippines, countries where there are democratic force, noticeable democratic force. We should work together to cooperate. We should not allow dictators to cooperate among themselves. Look at Hun Sen now. It is clear that Hun Sen wants to protect the military junta. Hun Sen has received the foreign minister from the military junta in Phnom Penh. And Hun Sen is going to visit Myanmar as if there is business as usual. Hun Sen wants to normalize the situation in Myanmar. His objective is to bring the leadership of Myanmar back to international fora, including summit meeting within ASEAN and with the rest of the world. This is unacceptable. This is very sad, very dangerous that Cambodia has become the chair of ASEAN and Hun Sen is using his position to try to legitimize the military junta after the coup. This is unacceptable. I yep. think all Democrats in the region now should speak with one voice and should condemn what Hun Sen is doing. He's abusing his position as a chair of ASEAN to try to legitimize uh, and to normalize uh, the situation in Myanmar. I think our final goal, if the Democrats in the region 
work closely and effectively together is to see a reverse domino effect. We are now concerned that one democracy fall one after another under the hands of dictators. But let's work together. I am sure that one day democracy will prevail in our region and we will push for the victory of democracy in the rest of the world. Thank you. To you, Mr. Sam Rainsy, can you tell us the ways in which you think that Cambodia's strong man is learning from Myanmar's strong man and vice versa? I think Hun San is ahead of Myanmar in terms of repression, crackdown, and killing democracy. Hun San is apparently more subtle. A constitutional coup is more subtle than a military coup. You don't need to proclaim that you stage a coup. You just do what is necessary to destroy democracy. All of a sudden, democracy means at least an opposition. If you destroy the opposition, there is only one party, the ruling party, and one party state. This is the definition of autocracy, of a dictatorship. So Hun San did not stage a military coup. He just banned the only credible opposition party. He confiscated all the positions that the opposition won through elections. He banned opposition leaders from politics, and he organized an election without the participation of the opposition, and then he secured all the seats at the National Assembly. So this is a fact, and you cannot even pretend that there is a facade of democracy. There is not even any facade of democracy at all. Sam Rainsy, how can the international community support the pro-democracy movement in Cambodia? I think as for Burma, the international community should warn the Cambodian regime led by Hun Sen that any election without the participation of the opposition would not be legitimate, would not be recognized as election leading to a legitimate government. Elections are due soon. Yes, next year it will be local elections, but more importantly, in 2023, will be national election. And national election, they will elect a government. So those elections will not be legitimate and should not be recognized uh, as such. So the international community should warn that don't play with such kind of election. We will not be fooled by this uh, facade of democracy with fake elections. I think it's very important to point out that Southeast Asia is geographically, geopolitically at the very center of a fight between autocracy and democracy in the sense that there are borders with China. What do you think is the answer, Sam Rainsy? Under Hun Sen, Cambodia is irreversibly under the control of China. I think the West should not have illusion that they can bring Cambodia, as long as it is under Hun Sen, back to the path of democracy. Impossible. And China will not leave Cambodia that easily. Cambodia occupies a very strategic uh, position. And Cambodia has already become a military outpost for China to lead its aggressive policy against neighboring countries. And Hun Sen desperately needs China support, especially financial support. Cambodian economy has collapsed without the financial support from China. The Hun Sen regime itself will collapse. So when I hear some countries say that we cannot leave Hun Sen alone, we must help Hun Sen in order to make him distance himself from China. It is an illusion. No other country can spend as much money to buy everything in Cambodia. All the whole Cambodian economy is under China's control. So the conclusion is clear. The crisis in Cambodia is not only a Cambodian crisis. It is a regional crisis and even a world crisis with China expanding, surely, and using Cambodia as an outpost to move further. We have to react accordingly. What do you think about the risk that Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen is facing, Sam Rainsy, of a repeat of what happened in 2012, when it was unable to reach a final agreement among the leaders of ASEAN? 
I think this possibility is very real. You will see it not only with Myanmar, but with the dispute in the South China Sea, because Hun Sen has always been supporting China on any issue that is important to China. The South China Sea, yes, and I think more and more when it comes to helping a dictatorship, because China has found natural allies. In any totalitarian country, with Cambodia first, but I think it's in the logic that dictatorship in Myanmar will end up supporting China because when they are isolated from the rest of the world with sanctions, etc., they have to turn even closer to China. And this is not only a matter of support, but it is a logical, it is a rational in dictatorship helping each other. So we must abandon our illusion, you know, that we should compete with China. China will pay a very high price to keep Hun Sen under their influence and to use Hun Sen to bring ASEAN back to the no interference in internal affairs of other country. This will come back under Hun Sen with the support of China. I think China's interests are best served by authoritarian, poor, and corrupt countries, and China uses the debt trap. China gives a lot of money to borrow, but when you cannot pay back, then you have to pay back in terms of concession, 99 year concession, land concession, and China end up controlling the whole country. But this. Can be applicable only with authoritarian country with no transparency, corruption, and in extremely poor country uh, which have uh, no alternative than relying on the China massive financial support. What would be your message? I'll go to Mr. Rainsy. I would ask the international community, democratic powers, not to accept fait accompli. Dictators they use fait accompli. And they think that time will work in their favor. So democratic powers should not accept fait accompli, as they should not compromise on principles. If you start to tolerate massive human rights violations, say, "Oh, there will be improvement. We can negotiate with them in the future." I think this is illusion. The fait accompli in Cambodia, with Hun Sen dissolving the only credible opposition party, and what is in happening in Myanmar now should never be accepted as a fait accompli. That they should be reversed.